here. So uh, thank you for illustrating that. Our final uh, panelist uh, is a, one of the most distinguished uh, figures in the human rights field whom I've had occasion to meet over the years, uh, Labsang Sangye, who's seated uh, immediately next to me. Um, he is a, the democratically elected Tibetan a political leader. Um, he is uh, based in Dharamsala. Uh, he's lectured all over the world on issues of human rights and democracy. Uh, he is uh, someone uh, who uh, speaks eloquently on behalf of a, a struggling human rights uh, and dem dem democracy situation, and he will do so here today. So thank you very much, Lab Song. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, John, for your kind uh, introduction. Uh, being the youngest, uh, even though my name was listed the first, I chose to be the last, being a Buddhist and Asian, I thought I should defer to the um, wisdom of the elders. Uh, at the same time, I have to say the least, because uh, everything about Waslav Havel and the value-based foreign policy, all the distinguished panelists have already said, so I have uh, not much left to say. Uh, having said that, let me try to answer uh, John's uh, question. What does uh, value-based uh, foreign policy mean? I think if you look at uh, Wassil Habel, you can clearly see him as a rebel, but a realist. Essentially, when he, when he says value-based foreign policy, I think, I think he would say moral and money are both important. But if you have to choose between the two, you will always choose moral over money. I think his life clearly shows that he was a moral warrior. And uh, if you uh, read The Power of the Powerless, you can clearly see it's a prescription for a moral warrior. And Charter 77, I think, is a charter for moral revolution, moral and nonviolent revolution. And then Maybe I'll try to also touch on a karmic coincidence that he passed away uh, on December 18, 2011, which coincided with mm. the self-immolation by Mohammed uh, Bazuzi in Tunisia, which led to the whole Arab Spring. So I'll try to connect that with Tibet. Mm. Now, as, uh, as for Wassilab Havel being a moral warrior, and he would choose to be, he would choose moral over money, in his first address to the Czechoslovakia, in his first national address, he invited His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Pope John Paul to Czechoslovakia in his national address. That means clearly demonstrating that he is choosing moral over money or power. And then in February of 1990, His Holiness the Dalai Lama came to Czechoslovakia, and I think Václav Havel was the first head of state who invited and hosted His Holiness the Dalai Lama after he won the Nobel Peace Prize. Then was followed by American President George Bush, the father, then by John Major, the Prime Minister of England, and so on and so forth. So Václav Havel took the pioneering step to give weightage, the support, to Tibet and His Holiness Dalai Lama by formally inviting him and, address, and saying it so in the first national address. Now also, if you read The Power of the Powerless, you can clearly see it's a prescription for moral warrior. Essentially, he breaks down a communist system or totalitarian system. Essentially, he says the leaders at the top have the ideology and system in place, but if down the chain of command, and to the lowest level, at the policeman level, actually they follow the ideology and they impose a system not because of conviction, but because of part of the ritual. And that's the weakest point in any system. So hence, and he gives the example of Green Grocer, who chose the signboard outside his shop, which says that unite, uh, one should unite for the 
world power or something like that, unite the workers of the uh, union. Even though the green grocer did not believe in the slogan, but he chose to put the signboard outside the shop, mainly because he was following the system and he became the system. But what Waslev Havel prescribed is that at that particular moment, one should be moral and choose to revolt against the system. And once you reverse the psychology of fear, then how, that's how the revolution starts. So that writing was very encouraging and inspiring for me because given the enormity of China's power, economic and military power, you always look at this gigantic power and being myself sitting in Dharamsala, sometimes you wonder, and I often ask this question, why did you take this job? It sounds impossible. But then I always say, if you read The Power of the Powerless, you can clearly see how once a seemingly impossible action can be possible in the long run. If I paraphrase Vasilev Havel, he says that moral act, even it might look trivial at one time, it might look impossible at one time, but it grows in significance eventually you, and you succeed. That's how when he came out with Charter 77, actually no one believed that it could work, but he took a moral stand and him along with his friends drafted the Charter 77 and which became a reality in late 80s. That's how Czechoslovakia and all the Eastern European countries uh, became democratic. Now, Charter 77 has inspired many people around the world, including a Nobel laureate Lu Xiaobao. He and his friends had come out with Charter 08 for China, which is essentially calling for democratic governance for China and plurality, uh, recognizing the plurality and cultural diversity within China so that people can have uh, basic freedom. So Lu Xiaobao is also calling for Chinese people and the international community to be moral and to support the democratic movement in China. And you can clearly see the uh, protest, democratic protest in Hong Kong, that people are choosing uh, to be on the side of uh, democracy and people are choosing to be moral warrior. So now with Vaslav Havel's life, Unfortunately, he passed away on December 18th, uh, 2011. He didn't get to witness uh, the Arab Spring. But on the day he passed away, Mohamed Buzuzi uh, self immolated himself, he burned himself as a protest. <coughs> Contrast to Green Grocer of the Power of the Powerless, who followed the system and became the system, Mohamed Buzuzi protested the system by burning himself. I'm sure. Uh, Vaslav Havel might not endorse the act of self immolation but would have definitely supported the aspiration of uh, uh, Mohamed Bazouzi and called him a, a moral warrior. Why I mention this is because in Tibet too, in the last few years, we had 132 cases of self immolation 132 Tibetans have burned themselves, and of which 113 have died. So, this clearly shows how Tibetans are taking this drastic action. And to sacrifice one's life, one precious life, is not an easy thing to do. But they all are choosing to be, again, a moral warrior. They are choosing not to obey the system and be the system, but rebel the system and send a message across the world that Tibetans are suffering and what we need is basic freedom. And what we expect also, like the Czech, like Vaslav Havel, moral supporters from around the world. And the universal slogan of these 132 Tibetans who burn themselves are, they want basic freedom, they want to see the return of His Holiness the Dalai Lama to Tibet. Now as far as Tibetan administration is concerned, we not only not support the self immolation we discourage it. But having said that, we do support the aspiration because what they want to see is His Holiness the Dalai Lama return to Tibet. And I hope when Vaslav Havel 
in his first national address, welcomed His Holiness Dalai Lama to Czechoslovakia and became the state guest, hopefully calls by self-immolators in Tibet, calling for his return to Tibet will be realized with the support from people around the world and hopefully international community and governments, especially people in this room, will choose moral over money and make realize the philosophy of Vaslav Havel and his, leg and his legacy will live on for generations to come. Thank you. Well, I'm sure our audience can see why it was difficult for me to choose between our final two speakers, and they both spoke very eloquently, as did all the speakers on this panel. And let me, I have a couple of questions of my own, but before.